Right, so the anti-Semitism scam and Keir Starmer. We're back onto this again, but in a way the Starmer may not like too much. Now, if you, like myself, have been waiting for a moment of karma to come along and hit those in the Labour Party who have weaponized this issue, perhaps we don't have a lot longer to wait, as potential legal action, no less, may well be on the way. Yet more of it for Starmer's Labour to deal with. And given it has been such a scam, as many of us have repeatedly stood up and called it, and been called a fair few things by Starmer supporters in return, this will expose that matter for all to see. All forms of racism are horrific. They're intolerable. All of us surely agree on that. They should be all equally condemned. Yet in the Labour Party, that is not the case. Anti-Semitism, for example, has a bespoke complaints page on Labour's main website. No other form of racism does. That's a problem to me. What do you think? When it comes to the issue of anti-Semitism, I, like many others, know that it was weaponized as a stick to beat Jeremy Corbyn with. They tried so many other things. This was what finally stuck. An absolute falsehood as it was. But the thing with lies, especially when they're so prominently in the public eye, is that people keep questioning. And the more they get questioned, the more the lie grows. A lie can travel the world before the truth has got its boots on, as they say, or something like that. But a lie has no basis beyond shallow personal gain for whoever is spreading it. And when people dig into it, the lie has to grow. New lies have to be told to keep it perpetuating. And in this case, more people have to be punished. This legal action, then, potential action, has come from Jewish Voice for Labour, a Labour-affiliated group set up in 2017 to support Jeremy Corbyn, who is a great friend to Jewish communities. A substantial community of Jewish people live in his constituency of North Islington, after all, and are very supportive of him. To be a member of the JVL, you have to be both Jewish and a Labour member. Other Labour members of a non-Jewish persuasion could join as solidarity members supportive of the group's aims and values, which were to support the aims and ideals of the then left-wing Labour leader, as well as fight for the rights and say-so of left-wing Jewish members of the Labour Party. So when the Labour right, in all their various forms, moved against Corbyn on the basis of accusing him of allowing anti-Semitism to pervade in the party to propagate that lie, other members had to be sacrificed too. Investigations Finding people guilty of being anti-Semitic and not in keeping with Labour values. A clumsily worded tweet, perhaps. Liking a post by a MP from another party. Whatever it took to show that Corbyn had let too many anti-Semites in. For which you can read rotten lefties, frankly, who he enthused and inspired. Into the party ranks and diluting its red Tory chosen direction of political travel by the narrow-minded, get-rich-quick, careerist types on the Labour right. Entire affiliate groups were sent packing as well, of course, retrospectively even, the crime of time travel being created essentially as members were purged for attending meetings with groups before such groups were ever barred. A great many people from the JVL were barred for this reason too, sent packing from the party, mainly for attending meetings of the later prescribed group Labour Against the Witch Hunt, calling out the purely factional actions against its own membership who was being conducted under Keir Starmer's leadership, the witch hunt being the purges against people being accused of anti-Semitism, which was the narrative the mainstream media mainly carried too. The net result of this lie, of course, is that under the auspices of accusations of anti-Semitism, Jewish members of the Labour Party were accused of being anti-Semitic themselves. And of course, one leading reason why people were being found guilty of this hate crime against Jewish people was Labour members calling out the actions of Israel against the Palestinian people. This worked because for too many people, being Jewish and supporting the Israeli state is seen as being one and the same. But this is false. It is not anti-Semitic to call out Israeli atrocities, land grabs, home seizures, gunning down kids in the street, segregation. Israel is an apartheid state, and you're no racist for calling it thus. It is, however, anti-Zionist, but plenty of Jewish people are anti-Zionist against the state of Israel, but because of their conduct, not necessarily based on their mere existence. Plenty of non-Jews are Zionists themselves, such as Keir Starmer, without qualification. But conflating the two has become normalised, despite being wrong, and again raises cases of Jewish people being found falsely to be anti-Semitic themselves. Look at it this way. Under the Labour Party, you have Jewish people, for reasons outlined already and others, being accused of Jew hate themselves, of hating themselves in effect. Can you appreciate how that looks? How ridiculous that stands? How stupid that is? Self-hating Jews. Well, you've heard plenty in the media say that, but that makes it no less stupid, does it? Look at it another way. When was the last time you had a black person on the media accused of anti-black racism? When was the last time you saw a Muslim person decried for being Islamophobic? It hasn't happened because 
Where the Jewish faith and the Labour Party's conduct are concerned, it is all a lie. Well, the lie is being called out and the JVL are the ones doing it. A letter of complaint has been sent to General Secretary of the Labour Party, David Evans, and copy to the European Human Rights Commission, the EHRC, from law firm Bindman's, who are acting on behalf of Jewish Voice for Labour. This is a nine-page document setting out all sorts of compelling evidence of discrimination against Jews who have called out Israeli actions, defended Palestine, called out the deliberate confusion of the term Zionism and anti-Semitism, and how their members, the membership of the JPL, are being disproportionately targeted by the Labour Party. If proven in a court of law, if things get that far, that would be quite damning, wouldn't it? And the JBL are claiming to have all the receipts. According to their analysis, a Jewish member of the Labour Party is up to six times more likely to face investigation by the regime than a non-Jewish member. Upon being investigated, they are nine and a half times more likely to be expelled for anti-Semitism than non-Jewish members. Think about that for a second. If their numbers are right, and they must be pretty sure to be instructing solicitors, you're more likely, almost 10 times more likely to be expelled from Labour for anti-Semitism for being Jewish than if you aren't. With regards to the JBL specifically, full members of the JBL are an astonishing 53 times more likely to be expelled. And if you're a JBL officer, it's a crazy 444 times more likely. They're left wing. Tell me it isn't factional with stats like that, and all to perpetuate a lie that has turned into a Pandora's box that Labour under Jeremy Corbyn became more anti-Semitic, a Pandora's box that Starmer's Labour can't put the lid back on. And so the lie has to keep growing. Perhaps a legal ruling is the only way this can truly be brought to a meaningful conclusion then. Perhaps exposing the lies, all lies do, the liars end up coming undone. We've seen what happened to Boris Johnson after all. And well, a lawyer like Keir Starmer should have plenty to worry about in that, in which case. Fundamentally, it all exposes the fact that by using anti-Semitism for political ends or factional reasons, Starmer's Labour do not care about Jews. Just how Jewishness can be used to their advantage. All they seem to care about is anti-Semitism and how that might be useful to them, rather than something to be truly flushed out as a societal evil that it is. Conducting themselves as they are, they are shutting down conversations about the plight of Palestine, as well as excusing the apartheid being conducted by the State of Israel. And when Jewish people do speak out about such things, that does confuse those listening as to why a Jewish person would do that, when previously all they're hearing is the Labour Party and the mainstream media narratives on this issue. That, I believe, is one of the biggest factors determining the heightened levels of suspension and expulsion seen amongst JBL members who are calling it out and frankly embarrassing the Labour Party who are wrestling with this Pandora's box that is getting more and more out of their control. A legal case might just finally derail it, and it needs to be derailed if the fight against anti-Semitism is ever actually going to get back to being a fight against the real thing. I wonder how David Evans will react to it. The EHRC. Has Starmer got reason to be worried about this, do you reckon? The crowdfunder for this has passed £130,000 already. They mean business here. Is it inevitable this will end up in court, do you reckon? What will that mean for Starmer and Co? Do let me know in the comments below. Have your say on this. Be part of the conversation. Meanwhile, there's a video recommendation where Keir Starmer brought a motion some months back, you might remember it, in order to block Jeremy Corbyn standing as a candidate for Labour going forwards. But given all the narratives and all the conversations and everything surrounding Jeremy Corbyn and all the accusations aimed at him, you might be surprised to know anti-Semitism wasn't part of that application, that motion whatsoever. Surely it's not all a lie and to bring it up would be libelous, Keith. Well, of course it would have been. Bolsters the case by the JVL all the more, I think. Best of luck to them on this. I'll be keeping an eye on it and hopefully I'll catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.